RimWorld, quite possibly my favorite game as of recent history, developed by Ludian Studios, where just about anything is possible. And when I say anything, I mean anything. Granted you use a few mods, or 100. The modding community in RimWorld is amazing, with mods spanning from small alterations to major overhauls of several or all of the game's main mechanics. Taking a collection of mods, I will be taking RimWorld to the crime syndicate scene, acting as a budding drug dealer that starts working out of a small shack to hopefully owning a prospering empire of my own, successful enough to fund a small country. Now, of the mods I'll be using, most notably would be Medicines Plus, VGP Garden Resources and Medicines, Chemicals and Neutroamine, Setup Camp, several vanilla expanded mods including factions, and quite a few of my personal favorites. Now there will be a few general guidelines for the playthrough, just to add to the immersion. Any trading must include a significant number of drugs within the transaction. This will incentivize me to maintain my drug farm and not falling from it partway through once I'm well off. I should attempt to improve relations between hostile factions, when possible, in order to allow for further trading. Everyone likes a friendly drug dealer, especially on the rim. Revenge will be attempted, even at the threat of life. A disruption in the supply chain of drugs, money, and other goods is the worst insult you could commit. Any faction that steals, kills, raises anything of mine successfully that involves drugs will be met with as much deadly force as possible. People are temporary, drugs are forever. Now the only people that will be excluded from this rule would be the growers of drugs, since they are the life force of the crop and are thus treated as VIPs. Now the win condition for this playthrough is going to be a little bit different, it'll include leaving the RimWorld via the Royal Ascent route, or I could reach a total colony value of 1 million using drugs as a basis. Now these goals could change uh, later in the playthrough depending on like if I get to 1 million really quickly I'll just up it to something that seems more reasonable but that's about it for the win condition. And with that you have all you need to know about this series and the rules in place. If you like this sort of content feel free to like and leave a comment and maybe even subscribe if you feel like it. But now onto the video. For this playthrough I'll be using the Naked Brutality start with the Igor Invader Storyteller, since I want to simulate being regularly raided on account of my oh-so-desired drugs. Now this is a nice little spot here with a large river somewhat close to other colonies. Now for my colonist, he's going to have the fast learner trait since he will need to be quick on the uptake with learning things since he's the only colonist. He'll also have careful shooter so that he can really make those shots count and tough so that he is less likely to go down from injuries. As Aaron here landed, I noted there being only one main spot of fertile soil, so that's going to be where he starts out. The first order of business was to get some wood so that he could build a fire and as building materials for the start. Now Aaron's first meal here was a bundle of berries that he harvested, but for his later meals he's going to want something more appetizing. The first rudimentary hut really showed off Aaron's poor construction skills. However, afterwards, he went hunting for some more food and leather for clothes, as he was quite upset about being naked out in the wild. The first night was uneventful, and Aaron spent it sleeping soundly in the small cabin by the fire. Aaron hunted some more for food, and had some visitors wanting to stay for a little bit. However, since there were no extra guest beds, he will have to turn them away for the time being. Eventually, this place will be a bustling drug resort for visitors from all over the rim world. As Aaron was getting ready to prepare some tribal wear for himself, a mad monkey had appeared. While not the most difficult of animals to deal with, its small size proved difficult for Aaron to hit for quite some time. However, in the end, he managed to kill the monkey and survived his first hostile encounter. Aaron finished his tribal wear and played some horseshoes to celebrate. At this point, the necessities were mostly taken care of, so now the real work could be done by tilling the fertile soil and getting ready to start the drug business. As he tilled the soil, Aaron's low construction skill appeared yet again. However, tilling soil is material free and fast, so there were no significant issues. As I browsed the drugs available to plant, 
I noted that Pepever and Peyote were both faster than Psychoid. However, since I had no experience with those two in the past, and had no clue which would be more profitable, I assigned Aaron to plant mostly Psychoid with small sections of both Peyote and Pepever. The small shack was expanded to allow for a research table, and I assigned both drug production and psychite refining to be researched first, as that will be our main moneymaker. For the research table, I needed metal, and luckily for me, there was metal nearby to mine. However, Aaron was not very... proficient at mining, so it took some time to mine just one cell. Aaron built the research table and began his research. He would need more food in the meantime, however, so I assigned him to go hunt in his free time. I added a cotton plant section as well for future clothes. When a small tribe of wild men wandered into the colony, I looked at their stats and found none all too impressive, but I decided to make a little shack for at least one prisoner. They might be a source of money if I get a wandering trader to swing by. Aaron finally had his first harvest of drugs. Peyote was the first to bloom, with a market value of $6. However, it could be further refined in the future with the proper research. Aaron also harvested just one of the papaver to yield opium. Like the peyote, this could also be further refined with the proper research. The wild men eventually proved to be a nuisance, eating Aaron's limited food supply. So, Aaron ended up killing two of them and imprisoned the third as payback. Aaron provided quality healthcare and stripped a crash-landed individual of their clothes since they had no more use for them. I finally assigned a rice field for Aaron after maybe just a little bit too long to stop requiring hunting trips for food. Aaron then managed to steal a whole cassowary from under a feralisk's own nose. Once again, Aaron had another harvest of opium, and as he was harvesting berries to eat, a local boomalope had gone mad. Aaron dealt with it swiftly, the fire put out by a conveniently timed rain shower. Another transport pod crash. However, despite their skill set, they were a pyromaniac. That's a threat that Eren could not worry about now, so they were ignored and left to die. As if karma had struck, Eren had immediately gotten sick from sensory mechanites. It was not a terrible illness, but it caused pain that would become a problem later. The first harvest of psychoid happened late at night. And after realizing that keeping the imprisoned wild man was consuming more food than needed, Aaron released them to continue to enjoy their life, only to promptly kill them for eating another one of his precious meals. The first expedition into the world was planned, and since Aaron was not a knight or a dame yet, he would have to travel further if he wanted to trade. The trip there was uneventful, and Aaron made his first transaction as a drug lord, trading drugs and some leathers for an auto pistol and a helmet. However, as he left the colony to return home, he fell into a sad wander due to the pain from the sensory mechanites, halting all movement on the world map. From there, it took about a day until he regained his senses and continued home uneventfully. He arrived at the colony, stashed his loot from trading, and promptly went to bed, deserving a good night's rest. Now that's going to be it for this episode. With kind of the starting point established now, I should be able to focus on expanding the colony and recruiting more colonists, but that will remain to be seen. If you like this sort of content, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below, as it really helps me with deciding on what sort of content to make. But that'll be it for this video, and until next time.